humans are very bad at coming up with random things. Random That's things? True. Truly random. Yeah. So, for instance, um, there's an experiment um, where... Now, I'm trying to work out the exact way they did it. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's an experiment where there's, um, there's two, two black boxes, okay? And they both display um, three sets of heads or tails. So, it'll be like head, tail, tail, or head, head, tail, or tail, 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 or, or so on, okay? Now, both boxes display a series of those. It changes every five seconds. One's generated by a computer, and one's generated by a human being, okay? So there's a human being sitting there typing, and then there's another one, which is a computer, just making them up and generating them automatically, okay? And um, you do this test, and it's really funny, because you would think, oh, humans are creative, and we, we're imaginative, right? We can come up with something that's, that's random, but we can't. Um, our brains aren't... aren't they don't lack structure enough that we can come up with something truly random. So if you do this long enough, okay, what will happen is the one that's on the uh, computer, it will be very evenly split. Um, for instance, you get head, 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 um, and tail, 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 equally as often as head, head, tail, and all the other combinations. Whereas a human will be skewed in one direction. There'll be one that they'll be like, they'll forget, <laughs> uh, or they'll do it repeatedly, or they're like, wait, which one's it do? I can't remember. Anyway, so it's actually very difficult to do something like this on your own. You start doing things that are all the same. Anyway, once you've got your data, you can change it however you please. You may want to do some things like, I've made this bigger so that you guys can see it, but um, you may even want to view and um, freeze some panes, particularly the top row, because that way, um, you can scroll up and down, and you'll still have um, the field showing, which is kind of useful. Right? That's always sort of handy to do. Now, what are we actually going to do with this? Well, I want to revise some of your um, skills and knowledge to do with manipulating spreadsheet formulas. We're going to try and put it into, well, can we make a decision support system to do with this? Okay. So, if you remember, uh, who remembers how to make an if statement in Excel? We did formulas with this. Really simple ones. Okay, uh, okay that's right. I, I sort of glossed over it very quickly, but it's really simple. Let's have a go at this. Okay. What I want us to do is uh, put a, an extra column over here. Okay. And let's call it, say, hmm, status. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is try and calculate off of all of these things. Is a person overweight, or are they underweight, or are they about right, or whatever, okay? Now, before we get to that, before we know that, uh, you can sort of, you may have been able to tell from the next question, that a really easy way of working out whether someone is overweight, or underweight, or, you know, in generally the right spot, is the body mass index, okay? So let's remember, this one's pretty simple, how do we put in, or calculate, a BMI. How do we do it? Remember? Okay, good. So, what's on the top? It's going to be your weight, right? So, there I've got the weight of just this person in this row, okay? And then I have to divide by what? Do you remember? Yeah, the height squared, okay? Namely this thing, okay? However, this height is in centimeters. I asked you to put it in centimeters because usually people say, you know, I'm this tall and they say it in centimeters. Uh, but we need the height for BMI, we need it to be in centimeters, right? So I'm going to open a bracket, and I can't just take this by itself and square that. I want to get from centimeters to meters, so I divide by 100. All right, so there's the denominator, that's the height, and now I have to square that little piece. So if you remember, for an index, you use this little uh, symbol here, it's called a hat, okay? So this cell divided by height in meters squared. Alright, so, there's a BMI. And once you've done this, you remember the beauty of Excel is that um, this formula, because it has relative references in it, you can take that little corner uh, peg and drag it down, and you can um, take that formula and apply it to all the cells below. Okay, and you've got some value. Yes, interesting. Okay, now. <laughs> That's interesting. Right now, what you may like to do is now actually go and get some real information about, okay, go, go on, you know, Google and search up BMI, and what's an acceptable range? Like a person who has a BMI of uh, 
What is that fine? What is it classified as? Is it, um, you know, average, overweight, obese, or, you know, in the other direction? Okay. Go search that up. Okay. Now, while you're searching that up, here's what we're going to do with it. I, I don't actually know what the numbers are, but I'm going to show you what to do with them in a simplified form. Okay? Shh. Give me a second of your attention so I can set you up, and then you guys can actually finish this task. Okay? Now, here's where the if statements come in. Okay? I want to say something about this person. Now, because I don't actually know the numbers, um, and I know there's several different parts, I'm just going to simplify it to say you're fat or you're thin, okay? Very on PC, sorry. Sorry to the girls who are in this, but it'll just make it simple for me when I'm working out what uh, this status part will be, okay? So what I want to do is start a formula, say equals, okay? And it's called an if statement because it's, it's providing a condition. Like, say this if you're this, say this if you're that, okay? So I'm going to start and say if, okay? You can see that... Excel recognizes this as a formula, and that's why you get this auto correct thing here. Now, before that goes away, have a look at what this says. Okay? It checks whether a condition is met and returns one value of true and another value of if false. So it's just going one of two ways. It's a dichotomy. Okay? So I'm going to open a bracket, and that tells me what kinds of things, what kind of information I'm going to need to put into this formula to make it work. So once I've opened the bracket, this comes up. It says, I know it's a bit small, but you'll see it on your screens, hopefully. Logical test, comma, value if true, comma, value if false. And then it ends the bracket. Okay? So this logical test here is about looking at these values and applying some kind of um, logic, some kind of condition like an inequality to it. Right? So for instance, Let's look at my BMI, okay? I'm just going to say, all right, if your BMI is less than 20, that makes you thin. I don't know what that actually means, but that'll do. So this is my logical test, okay? It's a simple one. Your ones will actually have the proper numbers for BMIs, okay? But this will do for me. To go on to the next part, the value if this test is true, put a comma in. You can see uh, Excel is very helpfully... Um, bolding the, uh, the actual part of the equation, the formula that you're up to. So what did I want this to say? If this is true, if it's less than 20, I want to say, okay, you're a thin person. Now, if you want to input text, you do have to put it between quote marks, okay? It doesn't have to be quote marks. This value of true could be equal to some other cell or some other formula or anything like that, as you'll see in a minute. I'm up to the value if false. So if you're not thin, then you're going to be fat, okay? So, there we go, all right? Now, when I press enter, what are you expecting to happen? The formula will disappear, just like the formula for BMI disappeared, and it'll be replaced with the answer to the formula, right? Which I hope is right, okay? Now, again, because we've done some formula magic, yeah, that, that locker guy, pretty fat. Okay, now anyway, take your um, peg in the corner, drag it down. Oops, sorry. Okay, so by the looks of it, actually, Lachlan is one of the wonderful individuals who's, you know, only, they, we don't have many fat people, so good on him. Okay, anyway. There you go, you can see what's going on, okay? Now, as you know, this is actually not as uh, complicated as the real world, all right? This is very, very simplified, okay? So what if we wanted not just one or another, but different kinds of conditions, like underweight, severely underweight, average, and so on, okay? Now, there are lots of ways to skin a cat, okay? There is more than one way to do this. I want to try and uh, introduce a way which just uses the same tool. It's going to look a little complex, but it's, it's no more difficult than what we just did. Okay? So let's say if you're 
less than 20, okay? You're thin. But if you're not thin, that doesn't automatically make you fat, okay? So let's introduce a class in here called average, okay? Average. So, if you're less than 20, we still want to say thin, okay? But if it's not true, if you're not less than 20, I don't want to go straight to fat. I want to have two new options. So for two new options, I'm going to say if and start again. Okay? Now, I'm going to add in another bracket here because you can see what I've got is the same kind of structure. If and then one, two, three. Right? But within this third thing, I've got a whole other if thing. And you can see the, the green brackets are trying to tell you, all right, this is one little compartment on its own. All right? Now, what do I put in here? Okay, well, I'm going to go the same way. So let's say that if you're less than 20, you're thin. If you're less than, say, 30, 30? let's call that average. Okay, so under 20 thin. Now under 30, average. And now if you're not under 30, you're above 30, and we'll call that fat. Okay, now I'll leave this up here for a second, just so you can make sure one of the things about computers, right, is that they'll interpret what we say very, very precisely. Okay, so if you've got a, a, a comma, or a quote mark, or a bracket in the wrong spot, or if it's not there, you often have really serious problems with your formulas. Okay, so just make sure you've got it right. And now let's see what happens. Okay, so, he's average now. Why? He doesn't fit into that last condition anymore. Okay, he's not under 20, but he is under 30. Okay, so now I'm going to take this formula and replace all these other ones. All right, so you can see now, I've still got some thin people, I've still got some fat people, and I have three people who are between 20 and 30, and that's why they're classed as average. Okay. Now, that's sort of all I'm going to say at the moment. I want you guys now to say, well, okay, I've got some more information here. I also know, I think I know this person's age. Yeah, this person's age. It should make sense to you that a five-year-old who's, you know, 60 kilos and a 15-year-old who is 60 kilos are not both average, right? So, I'm going to leave it to you to think about how can I use this extra information? How can I use this kind of logic, right, to make a decision support system that says, go get some exercise or go on a diet or join the biggest loser or whatever you like. So it's a decision support system. We're trying to take data and help people make a choice. Okay? So I'm going to let you guys do that. Make all different ones. You can add in another column if you like uh, and put in, populate that with whatever data you like so that you can help these, um, these, these poor people over here make some decisions. Okay?